Hello and welcome to the fourth video of our mini prep series, the one where we mix the rather unfortunately named Buffer PB. Don't worry though, no plum bum today. Actually, come to think of it, I think lead is objectively safer than guanidine salts. If the pipes in the Roman aqueducts were made of guanidine salt, I doubt this video would be conveyed in a Latin derived language. Ah, that actually reminds me, we should definitely do a short video conveying the history of the development of the Plasmid Mini Prep Protocol at some point. But just so you know, the closest link in the knowledge chain to us is Dr. Nicholas Coleman, who excavated them at openwetware.org. The role of this buffer is to wash away proteins that escaped our 10 minute centrifuge step following the addition of N3. It will be impossible to pipette out a perfectly clarified supernatant. Inevitably, some cellular debris will be carried over into the silica spin column. PB will help denature and wash out these proteins through the silica filter while leaving the plasma DNA bound. While this buffer contains a higher concentration of guanidine hydrochloride, you're going to find this significantly easier to mix than N3, with many less steps. I'm not going to repeat my rant from the last video about how truly nasty guanidine hydrochloride is, so let's focus on the long-term health effects of exposure instead. Decreased lung function? Okay, that's not good, but let's check out the next sentence from the MSDS. Guanidine hydrochloride causes decrease in bone marrow activity, usually shown as gastrointestinal disturbance and pins and needles in the lips, face and extremities. Irritability, tremor, incoordination and seizures can occur. Rarely there is low blood pressure, skin reactions, low blood glucose and increased levels of creatinine. Chronic exposure may cause kidney damage. Hey, are you still there or have I scared you away? Put your PPE on and get to work. Use proper safety unless you want to be a martyr to science like our blessed Marie. In case that's not enough for you, we're also introducing our first really flammable compound, isopropanol, aka isopropyl alcohol, aka 2-propanol. I really wish these damn chemists would just pick a single nomenclature convention and stick to it. I always show people XKCD comic 927, link in the description since I'm a noob with fair use. Alright, isopropanol. I would recommend you use a fume cupboard for measuring it out of the bottle and stay the heck away from open flames. I did this once without a heated stirrer and I think it took me about 3 hours to coax the last bits of salt to dissolve. Luckily our sister company has trusted me with their equipment for the day. Shout out to Argent Scientific, your one stop shop for niche chemical needs, shipping globally. Start out with 50 mils of sterile purified water. In case you forgot, I believe that millq or reverse osmosis is fine but I think that's a discussion likely to yield red-faced arguments in certain parts of the community. For our 100ml demonstration, I'll be slowly adding 47.77 grams of guanidine hydrochloride, adding more as it dissolves. Be wary of the difference in temperature between your hot plate and the glass of the beaker. Poor quality glassware will crack under too great of a difference, spilling highly toxic guanidine solution all over the nice mixer that we borrowed. The best types of glassware for mixing dangerous solutions is a conversation for another day, likely with Andrew, our chemistry expert. For now, I'll swear by borosilicate 3 glassware. Hasn't let me down yet. Has all your salt dissolved yet or shall I keep rambling? Oh, it looks like we're done. We're now going to add some isopropanol equal to 30% of the intended stock volume for our buffer. Since it's 100 mils here, I'll be adding 30 mils of isopropanol. I used to balance the pH of this buffer to 7.5, but word on the street is that this is an unnecessary or even unproductive step. I'll let you decide whether or not this is worthwhile, but skip it for mixing our own buffers for today. Finish by mixing your stock solution up to the final volume with sterile purified water, and don't forget to aliquot yourself 15 mils into a falcon tube for immediate use. Do not autoclave. Isopropanol is flammable. Never autoclave flammables. If you actually get some kind of live contamination in your PB buffer, you need to culture and sequence that species immediately. It'd have to have some seriously slick mutations to live in a 5 molar chaotropic solution. Don't forget to co-author me when you start winning prizes for discovering an impossible organism. Keep the stock bottle in the fridge and your 15ml aliquot on the bench. P1 is the only buffer aliquot that absolutely needs to live in the fridge alongside the stock bottles, but you're welcome to keep the rest in here should you be working very rarely. A big thank you for watching our series on the mixing and mini prep buffers. If you made it this far, how about nudging your mouse over towards that subscribe button? 
Our lab runs on community support, and helping spruik this channel to your friends means a great deal to us. Message our Facebook page if you're around Sydney and want a tour of the lab. I promise to keep the guanidine far, far away. Speaking of community support, we'd like to once again thank Dr Nicholas Coleman of the University of Sydney and OpenWetWear.org, two invaluable resources to our lab in the last five years of operation. Catch your next video when the ingredients take a step away from the cliff of radically dangerous, back to only moderately dangerous. Woo! Science!